Hey guys, welcome to Andy's Gaming and welcome to Sword Art Online Alicization Rising Steel, which is a fantastic new gacha game recently released only maybe four or five weeks ago now, so we're a month in. But even so, a month in, the game is absolutely um, going gangbusters. I really love playing it. It's probably one of the better Bandai games that I've played and um, already being a sword art game um, it's already got me hooked so let's just jump in what I wanted to do um, in this video is basically just run through uh, my usual quick start kind of guide around what I've done in the game what you should be paying attention to how the whole thing works um, some little tips here and there on how to build out the team what sort of scouting to do uh, all that sort of stuff, just basically a full kind of little coverage of um, everything that I have encountered in the game and what I think about it and how best to go about executing um, when you're playing. So the first thing I wanted to just say is that um, the game definitely kind of promotes that sort of gacha grind type um, game mechanic, which is really great. It's fine. I love that don't mind it particularly when you really feel like you're progressing so so that that's sort of what the game's um, mode of operation is but they do sort of uh, alleviate that a little bit by giving you sort of so much choice it's really free to play friendly there's lots of free kind of um, free to get characters that are really you know they're, they're pretty decent too um, there's a simple but relatively effective and interesting um, PvP game mode and they've got a very steady stream of events already releasing many many multiple characters now I will say that the characters that are released are typically kind of variations at the moment on some popular characters they're different kind of um, skins different sort of skill um, kits and equipment um, requirements and that sort of thing um, so you know they're, they're obviously getting their um, money's worth out of the IP and the franchise that is Sword Art Online but, you know, I don't mind that too much. I don't mind having a whole team of Alice's because uh, it's sort of a bit of a fan game for me. Um, so I'll try not to be too biased, but that definitely plays into it um, a lot as well. I don't think necessarily it's really targeted at people or players that have no idea what this um, IP and franchise is all about or don't, don't follow the anime and that sort of thing. I think it's probably more targeted to the people that are very familiar with it. So this is the main kind of game screen. You have your usual account ranking, which I'm at level 69 right now. Um, you start steadily growing your action points or AP, which is like your stamina, all the usual stuff. And you've got one main form of currency um, to go and buy anything from the shop and that sort of thing. And that's those diamond kind of cubes there, of which I have 30. Um, you can do things like customize the background here. I've got a dormitory picture. I've also got Ronnie's special nighttime costume. Um, so there are all sort of lots of personalization around that. You can change your main character, you know, all the usual stuff. Um, it's a nice, simple, clean interface. I really quite like it. You got your banners flipping across the top. You got this weird um, uh, sort of up here. You got this weird uh, inbox kind of function, which is usual. But then when you kind of accept stuff in the inbox, it goes into this present box over kind of on the other side. Um, so that's that's kind of a bit odd so you kind of have to collect things a couple of times I'm sure they'll start to kind of improve the quality of life aspects of the game as it progresses and streamline a few things um, so you've got your banners you've got your quest mode which is your story mode and at this stage um, there's a normal mode and a hard mode uh, that's fairly easy to get through I'll be surprised if you won't have gotten through it after about five weeks of playing maybe six weeks of playing at the most um, and yeah you get through both modes and that's really where you're going to get all of your currency initially that you're going to use across the various events doing some scouting which is basically uh, attaining new heroes or new weapons um, so which I'll show you the two main things that you will use for the gacha and um, two main RNG type items um, or features in the game so yeah you've got your quest mode you'll get your um, your kind of diamond boxes for completing those and then you'll have your events and they cycle through there's different types they are sort of starting to repeat a few of the events but just changing out some of the rewards um, 
the event stories are pretty cool too. I mean, I quite like them. They sort of reflect the Sword Art universe. There's some really uh, cool new stuff as well. So you're kind of um, showcasing some of the side stories that aren't necessarily in the anime as well. So it kind of fills in some gaps potentially as well in the whole Alicization um, story arc. So that's pretty cool. So next to that, like I said, Ordinal, that's your PvP. There's one game mode in there at the moment. That's just a straight out um, battle uh, matchup type game mechanic and you'll continue to go up ranks and I'll show you what that looks like and then you can do everything with your party down in the bottom right so party is just managing your equipment managing your various configurations of your party and you get quite a few different party slots that you can fill in which you'll need to do as well because a lot of the events have requirements or special missions for doing it with an all girls squad doing it with an all sword wielder squad doing it with special characters in the in the squad so yeah, so you'll kind of have quite a few different parties, I think, by the end of it that you'll kind of jump between. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the main game screen there. Uh, and if we just jump in to... I'm just wondering, actually, first of all, what we should do. So maybe if we jump in and have a quick look at the, um, the combat side of things. So you can see it's kind of laid out nicely, like a bit of a story jump back in there I'll actually change back to normal um, and I'll skim across and just try and maybe show you something that's reasonably easy to complete so let's go into this chapter 4 this is a pretty cool scene actually in the in the um, anime itself where Kurito and Yu-Gi-Oh are actually kind of trying to you know teach the uh, the nobility a bit of a lesson here in that you don't need to be noble born to be able to actually be a good swordsman um, or have good swordscraft. So you can see here on the right hand side, and there's a few story um, sections. That's really just literally just that story, nothing to do there. And you even get rewarded for that anyway for for watching it. Um, and then you'll see that there's some blue diamond ones which will have um, three missions attached to them. Now, if you want to know what the missions are, you can just at the top right next to the normal, you can click that and you can actually see there without going in, you can see what the requirements are to get a three, um, a three cup uh, complete, so complete on that. Um, so there's a few things to note. It's really only the first cup there, so you can see they're complete without a supporter. That's really the only one that changes for the most part. The other two, complete without character dying or defeat the boss at S rank or higher, those tend to stay the same. I've not really, at this point in time, I've not really seen those change. So it's really the top one that changes and for the most part in the quest mode, um, it's either completing it without a supporter or doing an incarnate move, which is basically an ultimate move in the battle. And I'll show you what that means. So. That's quite important to kind of have a quick look at um, if you don't want to really have to repeat these uh, missions um, or these quests. If you don't want to have to repeat them to try and attain the three star, uh, the three cup rather, then it's important to have a quick look. Um, completing without a supporter, that's an easy one. I find that those, you know, I've never really needed a supporter um, to be able to do those. I do take them though, and that's another thing as well. You'll find that if you want to build up friends and if you want to build up friend points which you can use in the shop to get more AP and other things then it's worthwhile just taking a supporter each time even if you don't use it because you get 10 friend points when you do that. So without a supporter that means you can't bring one if you want to 3 star it um, or 3 cup it. Um, so the other one, the incarnate skill, I'll show you that hopefully now. Um, so if we jump in, you can see here it's popping up with some friends um, or some possible friends here as well. You can cycle through. A lot of the heroes here on offer from the friends um, are quite high level. You might find some that aren't, um, that are more suitable for other stages. But generally speaking, it doesn't really matter which ones you have um, or you bring along um, because you're unlikely to have to use them. So here's where we do some party management. At the top left you can see what enemy types we have. So if you're familiar with the different symbols you'll immediately notice that this one says that the enemy types are light types um, around the level 34 mark. You can actually click on the eye next to that 
go in and have a bit more of a look. It also reminds you of the element correlation as well. And uh, it's a good time to mention that this is a element kind of affinity type system as well. So fire beats wind, wind beats earth, earth beats water, water beats fire. And then you have a complete sort of light dark discord as well. But they've also added an interesting thing which is um, an element that actually has no benefits or drawbacks either. Um, and that's the no element as well. So that's quite an interesting one and, and can play a bit of a strategy part as well in how you pull together teams and what types of characters you might want to use. Um, the other thing that's cool is to look at the reward list as well. So you can see there what you get when you complete and also the field drops of the enemies. Now it's pretty important to know what the enemies are going to drop because that affects your boosters as well. So if you have a look here You'll see down in the bottom here next to where I'm pointing um, that there's a boost item you can use. And there's three different types of boost items. You can get more money or Shia, Shia I believe it's called. Um, you can get more experience or you can get on the right hand side here you can get more items dropping. In fact times two of the items dropping. So when you have a look at the actual rewards that the enemies are dropping that's what you're going to get times two. Now you only get one of these packages of drops per enemy you're fighting. So if you're fighting mobs then um, that many enemies should drop stuff from this group of things that could be dropped. If you're fighting a boss then you're only going to get one um, stack of a particular item. You might get two, you might get three, but it'll just be one of the choices there. So that's kind of um, something to just note down as well when you're sort of farming and trying to work out which levels are the best. Um, and I have some ideas around that as well. Um, Alright, so back in here and the main members you take four with you. They're the ones that are going to be fighting to begin with. Um, you can see here I've built it out enough that I've got um, a decent contingent of high level or max level uh, four stars, which are the maximum star levels you can get right now. Um, you'll see there that their elements are in the top left corner of their portrait and just under there and next to, you'll notice that there's some down arrows there or some up arrows. Those are actually just indicating to you whether that character is going to have a disadvantage elementally or an advantage against the enemy. So it's a good indicator there again to kind of remind you. Maybe you want to swap out one of those. Um, and then just underneath you'll see a bit of a diamond. Now some of them are completely kind of dark purple. Some of them have a blue quadrant um, out of four quadrants in the diamond. Some of them are completely pink. That's basically how many times I've limit broken that character. So four stars go up to level 80 as a max by default and then five levels thereafter for every limit break that you do. Up to a maximum of 100 there which you can see I have for eye patch uh, Alice. Um, so the ultimate goal is obviously you want to get all your characters completely max limit broken um, and then follow through with the skills and maxing out all the skills which I'll also show you. So just following through, then you have the main stats there as well, which um, show you your HP and your magic points um, as well. And magic points are just basically your action points you have available for your skills. Um, so they are finite, you can't just keep uh, forever hammering away at skills, eventually you will run out um, of those. But unless the fight is really, really difficult and really long, you probably for the most part won't run out of MP as you're playing. Um, clicking on the skill slot button that'll take you into a, a view that will show you what skills you have and what you can max out. There's actually a little badge that pops up, a little red indicator that pops up with a number in it when you actually have something to do in there such as upgrading a skill or something like that. You'll notice then under there we have weapons so there is a whole equipment gacha part to this game as well. Uh, weapons do have elements um, attached to them as well and that typically shows you what um, focus that that weapon has on enhancements. So um, for example I've got Kirito, I've got the Dark Swordsman version of him um, and his uh, Night Sword as well. Um, forget his exact name of it. I'm going to just quickly click on there and jump in. I can do an enhancement show it. Night Sky Sword, that's what it's called. Um, so you can see there that the Night Sky Sword is of a dark element type 
Um, it doesn't have any specifics on there, but I think it does give you a bit of a boost on that. It is Kirito's sword. Um, so, you, you know, for a kind of continuity perspective with anime, um, you can equip other weapons. So you can, you know, use other characters' weapons. You can even use just generic weapons, which are um, the blue ones there or the, the bronze ones um, that you can also get, which are lower quality. Um, but yeah, so you want to you know, get your weapons also limit broken, and that requires duplicates as well um, in order to do that. Um, so yeah, so you, your weapons play a part and your weapon stats play a part as well in the power of each character. So that's pretty much an overview of that. Then you've got your sub-members. They will actually be subbed in as you lose members of your main team. Um, in some modes, I think if you auto play, you'll be able, that will sort of happen automatically based on the order. If you're not auto playing your manual, you can actually select which ones come in. Um, so you know, it's good to have um, some complementary sub members as well to kind of bring in, depending on what's sort of happening in the battle itself. Now you won't be able to swap in and out um, at sort of your own leisure. You will have to wait for a character to die before you can do that. Um, you see there, I've also got my supporter that I've chosen in filling out that third slot. So overall, seven characters available to bring in. So it's quite a lot, and really, unless you're kind of really struggling, um, and you've gone for a really high level to try and beat, for the most part, you should complete pretty much all content um, once you get to sort of this stage with these sorts of character levels at just 80 even, you should be able to complete most content. Maybe, you know, at least, you might not get any cups for a level at all but you could should be able to clear it so that's kind of the main screen there you'll see that there is also a cost so each character particularly initially when you're building your team you'll notice you've got to kind of manage cost a little bit you won't be able to just chuck all your four stars in right at the beginning you do need to get your account leveled up to increase the score of this cost over here you can see i've got it at 94. the max cost of a character so far i've seen is 16. Um, and that's sort of quite high for when you're starting out um, for some of the free to play characters there it seems to be around 16 um, but most four stars are 12 and then it halves for every um, tier level you go down so three stars will be six uh, and then um, something like two or three for the two stars so there you go that's kind of the party um, you can change things you'll notice over here it's got no change that's because your equipment gets locked when you enter the um when you enter the kind of the cathedral um game mode which prevents you from making any changes because you're kind of technically it's like a tower ascent type um, game mode so they don't want you changing your equipment as you move through that so i can quit that and that will allow me to change the um the weapon there anyway so that's it so i'll just go through and maybe select a team that's not too powerful just so i can hopefully show you um some of the incarnation and actually try and choose something as well that oh, I've got some charge heroes in. Uh, let's have a quick look at combat and then I'll go through how kind of to construct your team based on what sort of content you're um, tackling at the time. So let's just jump into this one. So you'll notice immediately it's very anime inspired and quite feels a bit like a um, an actual cartoon, something like that, when you're watching an actual anime episode, and that's really by design, um, which I find really, really cool. I actually quite like it, quite like it a lot. So here we go, we're on manual mode. You'll see at the top right here, we've got an auto button which we can click, that will play for us. Um, over the top, we've got a turn order, which is really useful to work out what sort of um, enemy you should be attacking, you know, who's going to go before you. On the left hand side here as well you'll notice that they have a letter next to them. Um, the first one A, next one B, so you can tell if you've got duplicate characters in your team and the enemy's team which ones are yours that are coming in the turn order, which is pretty cool. Um, you'll also see the enemy's HP gauge. At the top of that, um, just above, you'll see a turn order here. You'll also see the enemy incarnate gauge as well. And the incarnate gauge is basically your ultimate gauge meter, which you will fill up to 100% uh, in order to execute one of your character's ultimate moves, which are quite powerful and usually kind of game finishing type moves, depending on which character you get to execute it. 
So you'll see down the bottom right, that's mine. It's a zero, which is what I start with. And then I've got my sword skills um, laid out here. Um, Asana, the the um, level 70 version, which is this one, three star version. She's got two assault skills and a break skill. Um, the whole kind of concept of the uh, combat in the um, in the game is really to kind of play a bit of a dance between breaking the opponent's enemy or the opponent's incarnate gauge and raising your own. So you. You break their gauge by using a break skill, which has typically got some debuff tied to it as well. Um, and that will reduce it by a percentage, depending on how good that character's break skill is that you've used. And then you raise your incarnate gauge by using assault skills, um, by using attacks, so just base attacks, which you can see over here. Once you run out of MP, you can only really do attacks. Um, and also by charge skills, which I'll show you when I get to a character that has a charge skill. So Asana, right now, um, he's already at 100%. I really want to focus. Assaults will break it a little bit as well, so they'll reduce a little bit, but not nearly enough. Now, for boss fights in um, either quest or event mode, even if you reduce it below 100% on the enemy, um, if you reduce their incarnate gauge below 100%, they're still going to be able to do a 50% incarnate ultimate on you. Um, it'll just be at a reduced damage rate. So if you want to eliminate the ability for them to do it all together, you have to reach 0% for their incarnate skill. So that's something just to note, because it really means, you know, that you you kind of want to make sure whatever um, break characters you bring have as high a break skill um, percentage reduction as possible, so that you, um, you know, can kind of get that gauge down as quickly as possible. So here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to click break, and we've only got one enemy. I think this is um, Humphrey, Lord Humphreys or something like that. Uh, so we can see he's a no element character. Oh no, my attack is a no element attack because I'm a no element character. Um, it actually scrolls across, it tells me um, the incarnate break is going to do 40% reduction. So it tells me what sort of level of attack it is. It's pretty cool, it kind of gives you all the information just in case you've, you've forgotten. So we'll hit that again, so you basically select it, you select the enemy, in this case I only have one. It does a pretty cool cutscene, um, which is unique for most characters, um, particularly four stars. And then it will go straight to the next turn order, so you can see he's at 60% incarnate now. Now you can see I've got a charge skill here, um, and then up in the gauge here, the next person that's going to, a character that's going to um, have a turn is um, my Selka. Uh, young Selka character, the wind wind version of her, um, and then following her is going to be young Alice as well. So I don't know if they have some break skills, but what I want to do is just try and see if I can get my gauge up. So if I do a charge skill, you can see that this one is a medium one. It's going to give me 16 and a half. Now this character um, is uh, is just a three star character too, so her charge skill is not that great. Um, but anyway, let's let's do it. So there we go. And now we've got another charge character, which is Selka. So we'll hopefully give her a go. Now, okay, so now young Alice has a break. And that's going to get down to 20. Well, the trick here is to try and do this without killing him. So you can see I didn't eliminate it entirely, so he still did his incarnate and managed to maintain it. Now it doesn't really matter because his incarnate, incarnate wasn't that strong. So it was okay to get it down below the 100% and just wear the um, damage on the character. So hopefully I'll be able to keep boosting mine up and I can show you my incarnate skill from one of the characters. So we'll just keep going, he's at 0% now, we'll just keep charge attacking him. And assault attacking him. Or we'll use another assault sword skill. So there is, um, there is in the game the um, distinction between magic and physical attacks. Um, so most of the magic attacks are called sacred arts, and they typically show you, you know, in the animation what sort of um, attack they are. If you're using a sword, it's typically a physical attack, um, from what I can see. If you're using magic like that or sacred arts, then it's a magic attack. 
And some characters are much more powerful at magic attacks versus physical and vice versa. So um, yeah, it's good to have a mix and to also match your team um, against uh, using uh, attack types that are actually weak, that the enemy is weak to. So here's an assault skill. It just raises my incarnate up a little bit. So they do kind of say little things here and there. Um, they also do enhances and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. It's kind of like you're in a literally a Sword Art Online anime battle in, that's, um, that's actually been written and published out there, which is really fun. So here we go. We're at 78%. We should be able to reach 100% before he has another turn. So here we go, we'll do another one, and then this one should raise us up. Um, do we get? No, we're not quite at 100 yet. But I think we will. Yeah, we're going to get um, Asana is going to have a chance. So there we go. So now you see here, down the bottom right, we're at 100%. Now normally I'd probably wait one more turn and try and line up all my characters and the reason why I do that is because there's a pretty cool game mechanic where you actually can do some switch attack and a final attack follow through just adds a heap more damage so what I might actually do is let him have a turn so you see as soon as I say stay and don't do anything you can see that um, on the turn order here Asana gets another turn immediately after and it lines up all my characters in a row so you'll see that each of them will have a turn now one of them may die here if he decides to attack but I'm betting he's going to do an incarnate charge up which won't do any damage to me so let's just see that, let's give that a go so, okay what's he doing? oh no he's just increasing his attack power again and he's going, okay so he didn't attack but it still wasn't very, very much so what I can do here now is I'll do Asana's Incarnate, which I just click and then I select the character. Now you see all the characters lined up there. That means my switch attack is going to include every single character. So we do the Incarnate attack. Her animation's not that great, unfortunately. Um, hopefully I haven't killed him. Yeah, no we haven't. Oh, ah, she actually didn't get a chance. Oh, it's a bit of a cutscene, okay. Okay, what's going on? Oh, okay. So unfortunately we defeated him with just the incarnate attack, so we didn't get to do the switch. Yeah. So it's just showing us the cutscene. There are pretty cool little cutscenes there. Um, and they do have voice acting too, which is great. Alright, I'm just gonna skip that though. So yeah, so unfortunately I couldn't show you the switch attack, which is pretty cool. But um, essentially what it does is it just allows you to select an attack from every single character that's lined up in a row um, between enemies. So as long as there's no enemy in the turn order, I can do an additional attack with every single character which I can select. And it doesn't have to be an attack, it could be a heal, it could be anything really. So. Um, you can see here I've managed to defeat them within 16 turns, so I'm S grade there. Just gives you a bit of a view on what um, experience each of the characters got. And then there's some gold here that I've gotten. And then it'll probably pop in and show me what the rewards were. Yeah, so here you go. This is what I get as a reward for the completing that chapter. Or completing that, um, that quest in the chapter. So... What's really neat as well about the game is that I can actually just challenge again, not change a single thing just by hitting that one button just here to the right of there. Um, it shows me what AP it's going to consume, which is I, I really like. Um, and that will basically start the whole battle again. No change, nothing. It's really great because a lot of, you know, repeat type um, functions in other gacha games, you know, you have to click three or four times, but not with this one, which is really cool. Um, if you did apply a boost last time, you will actually have to go in and reapply what boost you want to, before you do that challenge again. Um, so that's just something to note. It won't auto continue to add those until they're exhausted. So just something to think about there. Now you see I earned some friend points because I brought um, Teddy Boy, but Teddy Boy didn't need to be used. 
Um, I just do that anyway, just to kind of build up those friend points. Uh, I got a mission completion. I just had to complete a quest. The dailies are pretty easy to get through as well, um, so that's all good. Um, so that's a bit of combat, um, sort of how it works. Now, in terms of actually building out a party, let's have a look at that. So, as I mentioned before, there's two main kind of types of um, of skill, other than just assault skill or DPS type skills, and they're charge attacks and break attacks. And um, you know, you're, you're playing that bit of a dance between trying to get your incarnate skill off if you can. Um, and breaking the opponent's uh, incarnation gauge as well. I found with most of the content actually there's really no point other than when there's a mission objective there's really no point in trying for the incarnate um, skill. It's better off um, it's a better kind of strat I found to invest in the break skill uh, characters and just really you know make sure you've kind of got up to three good break skill characters in your lineup of heroes that you're investing in and building and I say that because you could probably get away with two for most content but when you get to the really difficult kind of EX or extreme stages in particularly in the events you'll find that you get some of these mega bosses that raise their bar up to more than 200% and unless you've got three really good characters um, you'll definitely not be able to reduce that gauge down to zero, which is really what you need to do at that type of gaming level. So I would say, you know, try and find some three of the, the best kind of break skill characters. Now, some of the best ones that I've got so far that I'm using um, are Kirito here. So if we just jump into Kirito. Oh, we'll do that by going to the skill slot. So Kirito here, we have um, the vertical arc B+, I've got it to level 2, so 2 out of 3, still need to continue to limit break him to get that further. It's a medium slash attack, um, it does some debuff on it, so it lowers their attack by 10% for a turn, and it's a 50% break. So really what you're trying to aim for is at least a 50% break if you can which um, is available on four star heroes um, so he's he's someone I'm invested in he's a really good single target damager as well um, so he's typically great for he's sort of great for PvP um, but he's really really good for bosses in the events and also in quest as well um, so go for him uh, Alice um, Osmanthus Knight, so the middle one here, she's also um, really good. She's probably one of the most popular characters at the moment in the PvP meta as well, just mainly because she's got a really strong, um, she's got a really strong assault skill as well. She's also an AOE damager, so I've got hers to three out of three in terms of levels. It's an extra strong attack on all enemies. Um, it charges by 10%, which is pretty good on the gauge as well. So, you know, from a PvP point of view, if you've got her maxed out um, and you really got her attack strength up um, by either amping her with a buffer or something like that, then she can pretty much take out an entire PvP team in one hit using the horizontal A+, particularly if it's level 3. Um, but she's got a pretty decent uh, break skill as well. So it's a strong slash attack, single enemy. It does a magic attack reduction, so sort of um, it sort of mirrors the uh, Kirito's there as well. Um, and it also does 50% kind of break. So between two of these characters, for most bosses that only charge up to 100%, you can eliminate their incarnate gauge pretty easily in one sort of round of, um, of combat. Uh, she also has uh, an enhance as well, which comes out late, sort of later levels as you kind of raise her up. Um, so she'll do a magic uh, resistance raise for 20%. Um, most of them are raising defensive um, statistics. If I have a look at Kirito's one as well, he also, I believe, has a, a protection. Yeah, so he's a physical res raise. So he's he's kind of paired up with with Alice he's pretty good that's a pretty good pairing and I see it quite a lot where um, players have Kirito um, most players have Alice as well um, we've also got kind of from a tanking perspective we've got Alice with the eye patch um, she's over here 
she uh, she was one of the free to play characters, and pretty much you could get just completing quests. She's not terribly strong from a damage perspective, so she's someone I'm looking to kind of get rid of as soon as I can. But she can um, she can do a provoke, which is really cool. It's really cool because you can, for particularly for a single target damager like Kirito, um, and in PvP you can use her to provoke Kirito to only attack her. So I kind of use her as a bit of a damage absorber. Um, she's got decent defense, and um, yeah, she's she's basically there really to kind of just absorb damage, try and do some provoking. Um, and quite, she's kind of versatile, I think, for most teams. Uh, having her raised up to level 100, she's got a good HP uh, improvement as well. So she typically would absorb most damage uh, coming her way from a single round of enemies. So, um, so that's her. I've also got to showcase Ronnie. So Ronnie was my first four star. She was someone I got early on, basically, when I did my first... Uh, pull my first 11 pull and I would have to say um, I've got a few other healers and most of the healers are either Leafa um, there's a version of Alice as well there's young Alice there is the sleepy or bedtime Alice um, there's also uh, even Idis as well has a pretty cool damaging and healing ability which I will talk about as well I really like that but Ronnie, I have to say, is one of the best characters in the game. I think she's absolutely amazing. She can do so much damage with her Sacred Art attack, her Assault skill. Um, and she has one of the best heals. It's an AoE heal. She can pretty much bring my entire team back to maximum health right now um, in, in just one, one go. So she is a fantastic unit to put in your team and invest in if you're... Um, you know, you need to fill that healer slot. Uh, I think everyone else sort of does an okay, uh, kind of does an okay job at healing. Um, Leafer is a popular one, particularly the four-star version of her. But really, I think um, Ronnie is definitely one of the, the best uh, that I've come across and have experience with anyway. So um, she does uh, a good, if I look at her skills, um, you can see here in terms of the order, um, unlike some other characters, the first skill is a heal skill. So that kind of tells you that her main um, attribute is kind of healing, healing, and that's really what she's focused on. Um, but, you know, she has a really good attack too. It's an extra strong attack, Luminous Lancer, on a single enemy. Um, it also does damage over time as well, which is really great for bosses. Um, there's quite a few bosses as well who are who are dark, so she gets pretty good elemental advantage there. Um, but she um, she can really wipe anyone off the board, pretty much in PvP that I've encountered, right up into the SS um, tier rankings um, for kind of CP type levels of teams up in the 60, you know, between 60,000, 60, 000, 60 um, 65,000. So yeah, she's really, really great. I recommend her to really try and go for her hard. And if you do happen to get her, definitely invest in her. So those are the main showcase ones. I'm also building up a few others. I see a lot of people using Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't think he's that great. He is a charge skill character. Um, but Idis over here, I've got her as a sub member over here. Um, she is definitely one of the better, I think one of the best new characters that's been released. Um, mainly because of her um, her skill up here, Carving Shadow Bloodlust. Uh, sorry, that's an incarnate, not that one. Umbra Drain. Umbra Drain is really, really great. It's a really good heal. Um, it says it's weak, but it's actually not bad. I found it pretty good. Um, but it's a really good, strong attack on all enemies. So, you know, you sort of couple her with... Alice Osmanthus version of Alice um, who will do a big strong AoE attack. You can use her to kind of continue to um, up your team's overall health which is really great because if you've only got Ronnie one of the issues with only having Ronnie is that she's typically one of the fastest characters so she goes first um, which is really great for damaging um, and taking Kirito out of someone's team almost immediately before you even get going but um, but 
you'll find then you get damaged and it's a long time before Ronnie's turn comes around again. If you've got uh, someone like Iotis in the team as well, that can kind of buffer up the health of the overall team um, while you're waiting for Ronnie's turn to come around whilst also doing really good AoE damage. So she's definitely someone I'm building up. Um, uh, and yeah, I've got in a few kind of alternative teams. You'll also notice... Um, you also notice there's three different types of weapons and typically they kind of fit the type of wielder. So here we've got young Sortalina. Sortialina. Um, I call her Sortialina, but if I look at her name, it's Sortialina. Yeah, that's right. So young Sortialina, um, she uses daggers and, um, and um, you know, this is another free to play character. So easy to max out to 100. She uses daggers, so typically the daggers don't really do great damage. Um, so you see here, thrust attack gives an incarnate charge of 18%, so it's got a decent charge there. Um, I don't actually know. She, yeah, so that's her charge skill. So she's got a decent charge skill. 20% is probably what you want to get though, so you really want to try and get your characters charging at 20% um, and then if I look at there she's got a strong attack on all enemies um, but the overall stats I think if you look at her overall stats um, her attacks at 5,000 how does that compare if we just look at Alice yeah not too bad so M attack 5,000 yeah so she's actually not too bad um, there is, um, I find as well, there's been a, quite a few water element type uh, heroes released earlier on in the game. So you do come across like a few UGOs, a few Sortialinas. Um, so yeah, you might want to think about the fact that you're going to be weak against Alice's and that sort of thing. Um, anyway, so that's more or less the characters. Now as you sort of saw, I um, was showing you a few screens there. This is kind of the main character screen here. It gives you all the information you need. It talks about the skills, which you can go into detail. You can see the equipment down here. And there's everything from four star specific equipment through to three star generic equipment, through to bronze real generic sort of stuff, um, which you get in mainly in drops and um, events and that sort of thing. And then over here on this side, there's enhance and limit break. Enhance will allow you to increase the level of the character which you need to actually use pots um, and uh, basically vials to do that and each element has its own vial so you need the correct vials as well um, but you can also just continue to level up through experience as well so you actually you know you can progress that way which I've found if you're playing the game you generally do progress it's only really when you've got a new character and you want to bring them up immediately that you might sort of decide to kind of go down the path of vials um, the other one is limit break, so when you click on that, you'll see actually to um, break through into a max level of 90, there's a few different things that I could possibly use. Here I can use specific Alex, uh, sorry, Alex, Alice Evolution Crystals, which you can get from different events and different things as they kind of come through. You can get generic Earth Elemental ones as well, same amount, um, they come from duplicates of different elements in the gacha. So they automatically get converted to those evolution crystals when you get them. Um, there's also these almighties, which are basically rainbows that um, apply to any character. So you do get those through some reward shops and things like that. Um, typically, you might get them through rewards for completion of quest or events um, as well. So that's what you need. Once you get 100, you basically click on that, go limit break, and boom, you can go up to 90 You'll stay at level 85, so you'll only need to increment another five levels. Although, you know, the experience required to do that increases as you get more and more. So, yeah, so that's the main kind of screen there. Uh, you can go in and have a look at the skills in more detail, clicking on that one. And then here is where you actually raise your skills up. So you'll notice if I click my sword, it's already selected. I've reached max level. But as I um, improve and get, um, uh, here's a good one, as I uh, improve and limit break the character, these start to unlock further levels for me to go. So even though I've got the materials that you can see down here, 
I actually don't meet the requirements um, and all the conditions. So I haven't um, I haven't limit broken enough to be able to uh, get this battle healing up to 400. Um, so that's the same with these skills as well. So you can see here, I need to be level 95 in order to do this one, even though I've got all the materials. So you'll kind of generally collect the materials, but it will require you to really heavily um, farm events and also do gacha as well to get evolution crystals. Um, so I guess the, the main kind of tip there is really think hard about where you're spending the evolution crystals. Um, just mainly because unless it's kind of a free-to-play character and they're giving them in the events, then it's kind of easy. But um, unless it's that, then it really does pay to kind of have a real think about which characters specifically you want to invest. Because as far as I'm aware, once you do that, you can't get anything back. There's no kind of, um, there's no redo on those. So that's the characters and the quests. Um, in terms of actually what uh, kind of characters you should have, how many of each type, I would say you probably want a good three break characters, like I mentioned. Um, maybe someone that can tank and provoke. Um, either that or a really good healer if you have to choose. And then have two really great charge skill characters. I would say only two because you can probably bring a supporter in as well to make up three if you really need three at some point in the future. Um, and there are times where you might need three. Um, but I would say, you know, definitely build more around the break. It does help a lot more in PvP when you want to actually make sure that you don't allow your opponents to ever get their incarnate skill off. Um, and uh, yeah, so I would probably do that. Um, and then also I found as, found as well that magic attacks are really, really useful and, um, and typically come with some decent healing if it's Ronnie, for example. So a good kind of mixture of magic and physical, I would say, just a balanced team. It's probably really great when you're starting out. That's kind of a, a bit of a quick tip when starting out. I would, I would try to do that. I also wouldn't really invest anything in um, limit breaking or upping the three star characters i would actually just wait for your four stars to come and they will come there's lots of opportunities to get four stars as you go through events as you get the um, diamond cubes which you will if you're just completing the game um, so you'll eventually have we should have i believe a, a you know at least be able to field a four main member team of four stars um, so I would just wait for that and use your evolution crystals for four stars only. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of my makeup I would, I would kind of go with if I was starting out. Okay, so events. Um, so here you can see that we've got quite a lot of different events. And a few of them actually haven't been um, removed. They've kind of just sort of hit their days left and sat there, particularly this Sortialina one here. Um, but others have aged out and we've got a bunch of new ones here. Most of these are sort of following all the same sort of format, pretty similar to Quest. Um, you'll see that there's different story um, <laughs> interspersed between actual um, opportunities to have some combat or a battle. Um, and once you kind of get through them, you, you won't be able to do the later ones until you've completed. So you do have to complete them in order. But there's two main things here. There's an event quest and a boss battle. So the event quest is what you need to do first. You'll do that. You'll try and get, um, you know, you'll try and complete the final um, battle on offer with the highest level enemy with the most AP required to do. And then once you kind of get to that, you'll pretty much just farm that for the special items you need to um, exchange in the shop. Um, that's the main goal, really. You want to exchange the items in the shop for all the good stuff. Um, now, you, you will get a few items as you go through the battles in Event Quest, but ultimately you want to get to the boss battle. So you do Event Quest to get these specific boss battle tickets. You can see I've only got six here, but you'll basically farm out Event Quest, you is AP, then, then you'll um, get these tickets and you'll basically use those to farm out the boss battle. 
Now the goal with boss battle I believe should be that you want to be able to do the level of boss battle that you can complete in one entry. And the main reason is that you want to kind of preserve the amount of ticket to um, reward ratio that you get. If you're continuously having to do two or three attempts, which you can do, then it probably doesn't work out. It either works out about the same as doing a previous level, enemy level um, battle, or it might work out slightly worse, but that, that's usually typical. So you go for the one you can do, EX or Extreme, um, as an example, you might go for that one. And you go in there, you can select your boost items, you can do all the things you do in quests, you can look in the rewards. So you'll see here that on the left side for completion, I get all of these special things. These are basically what you use in the shop. If I click on exchange point down here, you can see these are all the things I've yet to exchange for. Most of the generic stuff I typically don't bother with. Um, if I scroll right down to the specific, so here you can see that um, I exchanged for this Eldry um, picture. So um, that gives me the ability to put Eldry in my personalized um, lobby for the game. Um, I also did scout tickets, which give me free summons. And then I did these specific books, sacred arts manuals. That gives me, they're a bit harder to farm in the game. So I, I typically pick those up. But the rest of it, most of it you can get um, in easier uh, to do either in either quest or in other events. I don't, I wouldn't exchange for those. If I wanted a fire, three star fire weapon, I might go for this one as well. Um, but I don't really have any main fire characters that I'm working on, so I didn't really bother to go for that. Um, so, this is one. Stasio is one that I've cleared out. This was a good free-to-play one. Um, getting to level 90. I probably, I think I sat around level 80 maybe and did this boss battle. Um, but when you did this one, you basically got a free cell car, four star character if I scroll down to the bottom so they're really it's really great free to play friendly here's the evolution crystals for her allowed me to max limit break her um, and I actually got her as well as a reward I can't remember where where I got her from I think it might have been from a quest um, so yeah you can also go for her dagger as well um, I haven't seen a four star weapon for her most of the characters that get four star weapons I've seen only from the scout. So what does the summon look like? Um, well I wish I could show you because <laughs> I haven't actually got any um, diamond uh, gems for a while, diamond boxes, um, because I've completed the quests and I haven't actually gone through. I, I need to three, three couple of them just to kind of keep getting a few more. Perhaps I'll be able to do another summon. Um, but here you can sort of see that these are the different kind of summoning banners. You can, for the most part, get all the characters off of most of the banners. It's just that these particular ones, you get a rate up, or the first time you do it, you get 50% off, which I found really cool. So if I just want to, you know, try for a different character, there might not be a rate up for them, but I know typically I'll be able to get them off the next um, scout event that kind of comes through at probably half price. So it's definitely worthwhile saving up. Um, and not just doing the general scout or continuing unless you're really into getting a character from the banner in which case you can obviously farm that So here's the swords as well. You can see here um, There's some sort of general sword options from most of the main characters. You can get the blue rose sword, the Asmanthus blade um, Kirito's night sword which I have um, I've pretty much got all of these. I think I have I've got silver I've got Silver Tears, I don't have the Platinous Oak Sword, um, but I do have Night Sky, I have that one, and I believe, I may not have the Blue Rose actually, I think it's just the Blue Rose, and that's right, I've got Asana's Lambert Light as well. Um, then there's all specific different types of swords for different characters, I think some of these may not have been featured in any anime and they've just created, um, but you can see on the right hand side, you get a feel for what their... Um, their stats are and what these swords do. There are different weapons that do different things. They give you different boosts um, against different enemy elements and that sort of thing. Definitely worthwhile mixing matching swords as well to give you a bit more of an advantage 
in different team comps. So finally, let's finish off with a quick look at um, PvP. I have saved some entries, so I've got my battle points. Battle points at 5, which is your maximum. I am at the top tier ranking um, at uh, a rank of 69 within the SS grade, which is the top tier. Um, you'll see on the right hand side, it's really just a points based system. So the more battles you do, you get points. If you do consecutive victories, you get a points boost. Um, you can also select harder or weaker. If you look at here, I've got a weaker one down here, a harder one up there. Um, in which case you get a, um, a times 30% uh, increase basically on the points if you go for a harder. It's really weird though, I've seen total power values um, on these 1.3s are a lot lower than even um, the ones, so I think this needs some tweaking um, by the developer, by Bandai Namco, but um, where the total power balance seems a bit strange as well. Um, but sometimes that's skewed a bit because you might have two 100 level characters and then they chuck in a couple of crappy three stars in to bring their total power down but in reality you might get absolutely owned by a couple just a couple of hundred uh, level uh, 100 characters depending on who they are so let's give this a go live on the video um, which has never really gone well for me we'll go for this 65 rank up the top here um, I do look out for t particular characters try and avoid them if I can um, Obviously, uh, Ronnie and Alice, um, Osmanthus Alice, um, particularly at level 100, like, she can probably wipe out my whole team in one hit. So I try and avoid them, but where I can, where I can't, I you know just sort of do do what I can. Um, you'll notice there's no supporters allowed for um, ordinal battles as well. Um, so here we go. Let's just jump in. Okay, so this is a good sign. Um, Ronnie is actually a really fast character and turn order is determined by speed. The other fast character is Yuki, which they have on their team, I actually don't have. And she's actually weak to Ronnie, so there she's a dark, so she'll be weak to any attacks. Sometimes she manages to go before me and if the opponent's team is a lot faster than mine, it's pretty much game over with, a, with both Yuki and Osmanthus Knight Alice in their team. So fortunately I can get the first hit and I see that Yuki is actually straight after me but then also their Alice is. So Yuki's um, AoE attack is typically not as powerful as Alice's. So what I actually might try and do is just take out Alice even though Yuki is probably, um, probably going to attack me. I might just try and take out Alice. And yep, I managed to do a critical, so that was awesome. So Yuki, hopefully she doesn't do her... Yeah, she's going to do do her single attack, which is awesome. Um, if she did her AoE, I might have um, been knocked down a fair bit. So uh, next one in my lineup was always typically Kirito, and he will be able to take out Yuki so that I don't have to worry about her. Now at this point, um, Eye Patch Alice can't do very much damage, so I'm not really worried about her, but she may provoke my team to attack her. Um, and then Tears is, um, she's a decent damager, um, but a lot of people don't really build her um, sort of to maximum, so she's probably not going to do as much damage. So I'll probably at this point use my Eye Patch, do an assault on. Um, on tears just to kind of make her hopefully I'll provoke her okay so yep so now tears is there now I can basically win the game in one go with uh, win this match in one go I'll do my assault skill which is an extra strong AoE attack by Alice of Samantha's night version Oh, and actually I didn't take out Eye Patch Alice. So anyway, normally I would take out Eye Patch Alice as well. Um, but here we have to do an extra attack. I haven't had to heal anyone, but because Ronnie's magic attack is so good, I still, you know, she's still extremely useful. So we'll do another Luminous Lancer. And yeah, it's game over now. 
So there you go. So probably would move around that kind of tactic depending on what opponent. As soon as you do that, it refreshes all three. So you'll see all three opponents are now refreshed. Um, and now just rinse and repeat and, um, and do that. Even though I'm at rank um, 69 at the SS grade, which gives me the highest number of rewards I could get, um, it's really important just to keep doing it to maintain that level of rank as well so you don't sort of drop down and um, yeah, accumulate as many points as you can, which really kind of helps you in the long term. So there you go guys, I know it's been a bit of a long video, but that's kind of a bit of a quick start into playing Alicization Rising Seal Steel for Sword Art Online. And um, yeah, let me know what you think, what you guys think of this game. It's been mentioned a couple of times in the comments, but I don't really know whether this is something everyone's really interested in. Um, or if people are kind of giving it a bit of a miss. I really enjoy it. I obviously am a fan of the franchise and IP, so I'm a little bit biased, but um, yeah, let me know. Do you like this stuff? Do you want to see more um, SAO content? And if so, let me know. Other than that, guys, that's me done. I hope you guys are having a fantastic evening or a fantastic day, wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video for 2020. This is Andy, signing off. Bye.